Hi, morning everyone. Weekend was quite stressful when uh, I was told to have this presentation and I was struggling to figure out which brand do I pick up uh, so that there could be a little bit of a case study talking about then and now marketing. Um, also wanted to ensure that it's not a lot of gyan and concepts and this can happen, this is the way the world is going to transform and change. Um, so, uh, whatever I've put in, put across some slides and I'll try to talk and in the process I also realize it'll become very old when I can talk about then and now. Um, but the challenge is always to stay contemporary. Uh, so I've finally decided to pick up a brand uh, which is closest to our commodity. Um, this is the brand and she mentioned Ashirwad. So this is the brand that I'm talking about. It's now about six and a half thousand crore. Um, it enters around 35% of all India urban households. It's 40% in by volume when it comes to the category, branded out category. So lots of drum beating I've done right now, but let's come to the point. Let's try and talk you through um, how this journey has been. Um, so next 20, 25 minutes, I'll talk you through the uh, 20 years of journey that the brand has gone through. Um, this was the time, 2002, as she mentioned May, it's actually 25th May. So last year we just completed our 20th year. So very, very small branded ATA as part of the entire ATA we chain. Uh, it still is small. Um, it's still around 15% of the entire Rata wheat category at an All India urban level. Forget about the rural part, at an urban level it's only around 15%. 15 so when we uh, wanted to enter the category, the usual set of consumer problems came through, which is ki consistency nahi hai, kabhi uh, roti hard ban jati hai, kabhi pisai teek se nahi hoti hai, kabhi you will find that there is lack of husk in the product, the required quantum of fiber and so on and so forth. So there was consistency as an issue. We had a strong agri background and a backbone behind that. And so we said that, okay, and we solve this problem. And yes, we can because we will be going to the farmers directly, picking up the product, uh, uh, wheat from them and would do the necessary in terms of uh, providing a consistent product, whether it's a harvest period or a non-harvest period. The other obvious fact that came from consumers is that, you know what, we need data, but we need it very fresh. So that's a supply chain uh, issue that we needed to solve as well as manufacturing unit issue. So we ensured that the distance to market uh, was very low at that time. I think it was around 250 odd kilometers. Now it has come down significantly, uh, which is around 130 to 135 kilometers for uh, a manufacturing unit to a, uh, to a um, consumption center. Uh, so, through that what we ensured that we had a large learning curve around what are the wheat category, uh, types of wheat which we would take and keep with us throughout the years to provide the um, consistent product. But let's come to the marketing piece. So, into back in 2002, um, we said that okay, if Ashirwad needs to get built, there is an angle of freshness, there is an angle of consistency that we are going to talk about and that happens because we know Atta, we know wheat, right? And when we are talking about the homemaker then, it was obvious to talk about the fact that she's an active nurturer. So look, let's look at the first piece of content created in back, way back in 2002. And we will look at this journey from here onwards, how marketing has got, has transformed for Ashipath. जैसे आप अपने परिवार में खुशियां लाते हैं बिल्कुल वैसे ही आईटी से पेश करते हैं चुन चुन के लाए के उसे बना आशीर्वाद आटा आशीर्वाद आटा खुशियां चुन चुन के राइट सो यू लुक एट द एंटायर सिमियोटिक्स ऑफ द कम्युनिकेशन लुक एट द होम मेकर दैट वाज पोर्ट्रेड very different from if you would like to portray a homemaker today. 
Having said that, cohortization, which we talk so much about today, started way back then because it was the same brand and we had to talk two different stories to take this product back across to consumers. While in North, it was an everyday staple, continues to be a 20 kg consumption per household per month. And where back down in South, it entered because doctors told them that we should consume, we should move from rice to atta because that keeps you healthy and hence you needed a communication which is all about activeness. So so-called geo-based segmentation started right back then where the same brand moved in. Now you will see the two packs on the two sides of the screen and you will see that there are significant differences while one had the traditional chakki in it the other had an aspiration pulka, which was very difficult for a homemaker down south to really make, but they always aspired to make a pulka out of that uh, atta there. And you had that symbol of trust. It was considered to be a north-based brand because it was in the category of atta and wheat. So you needed to build that angle of trust with the consumers. Now, it was just not about these visual cues. Let's look at, and I talked about the fact that this category and the brand was considered to be up from north. Uh, so if you ask a, con ask a consumer down south, where does wheat come from? So Punjab, even today that's, that's the perception. So you wanted and needed to make the brand from the, uh, the, the, from the market and hence this communication. So the culture codes are coded back into the content piece you know, to ensure that there is a relatability of the brand down south. So the ease with which she danced is the ease with which you can make roti. It's always has been a tough one for them uh, down south to make rotis easily and it needed to have the culture code there. Right? So we see the storytelling there and I don't know if there are people from east here. The category codes in East had very different meaning system, which is all about fiber and hence keeps you active because of the presence of fiber in the category of Atta. And it is in Bangla, so I'll play that. Um, and these are all to talk about that entire concept of cohortization, geo-based targeting. <laughs> so you have this typical Bengali um, uh, cliche person persona building that is there that saying that they're very lazy, they really don't want to do much. But they are very good in talking, right? So they will always say, I can do this, I can do that, but they will end, not end up doing much. So these are the two brothers. The younger brother is like that cliche persona, and he doesn't really want to do much, whether the elder brother uh, ends up doing a lot more work than the younger brother. And the, finally, the story ends talking about the presence of Ashirwad in the meal, it makes the elder brother active and chotpotty and all that. So. Why I wanted to show all of these were that the concept of segmenting consumers and having story told in their language and their context for higher resonance, higher relevance was there in fundamentally in our marketing principles and not, not talking about Ashirwad or ITC for that matter, it is true across organizations and brands which was there then. Now we will see how it has transformed but fundamentals have not altered in a big way. Um, over time and over time, 
um, things have altered and content pieces have changed and brand personas have evolved, um, the consumer personas have evolved and so on and so forth. I'll cut to 2018, 17, 18, now 18, 19 roughly. And we'll take the story of Ashirvad Multigrain forward and see how those fundamentals have altered. So Ashirvad Multigrain is all about a lot of fiber. And we took up the story of digestion and that's the consumer benefit that we wanted to portray, right? So we will see the transformation in the marketing process and hopefully, now this is the most understood consumer benefit of digestion. Now gut health has multitude of uh, outcomes. If you eat well, if your gut is good, then you look good, you don't have pimples. If you eat well, then you are active, more, um, you, you have stamina throughout the day and so on and so forth. But let's look at, this was the TVC done and then we'll see how life has transformed. So this is the most common perception of digestion or easy to understand. I don't know many of you would have seen it, but... <laughs> with multigrains full of fiber ye family ke digestion ka rakhe khayal ho gaya ho gaya aashirwad aata with multigrains happy tummy for a happy you from my tc right so a very easy to understand uh, benefit with respect to digestion but let's now look at how this same core message now gets transformed given the current context in which we are trying to build brand equity. And this is all being now driven by digital and hence led a lot by the data that you are generating basis your digital processes. Now the first step that we are talking about is creating digital first creatives. So the, the idea is to create different kinds of consumer base and if you see here on the screen, there is a sedentary lifestyle, a consumer like me, who thinks that he should do a lot of exercises but doesn't end up doing it. And then there are people who would like to avoid hunger pangs uh, and eat less, help me manage my uh, meal consumption. And that's why there is a content for them. So let's, let's play one of them. Attention please. Sara din bethe bethe kaise hoga digestion? Exercise of food with fiber. Ye hai solution. Is liye rose khao. Fiber wali roti. Made with Ashirvadata with multigrains. Okay. Um, similarly, you will have content created for, let's take another segment of consumers uh, who are trying to avoid. Uh, Attention please. Khaane mein kam hai fiber, to kabhi kabhi jaag sakta hai. Hunger. Is liye rose khao. Fiber wali roti. Made with Ashifa data with multi-grains. Okay, so different kinds of consumer segments, different kinds of uh, cohorts. And for each kind of cohort, you would be constructing content and then you would be targeting those cohorts with the content. It's, it's something that we have been doing now for some time at a, at a pan uh, industry level, right? And uh, if you see across uh, even there are certain look-alike segments from your first-party data and we will talk about a first-party data a little more. Now what happens is, as you take these content forward, you would be doing these segmentation using one of your publisher platform, in this case let's say Google, and they will give you lots of segments and then you will be trying to push across your content basis those segments. But they are not watertight compartment segments, there are lots of overlap as far as those segments are concerned. So to avoid that and make things sharper for yourself, then what did we finally end up doing? So let's take the first segment of consumers, active seekers of fiber solutions. You have created a content for them. You will sharp target those consumers. After three frequency, in fact four frequency, you will see that there is a consumer base who do not react to your advertisement piece. So you will show, you will exclude those who have reacted, who have seen through, seen your ad, and then you will exclude them and show them the second ad. And in the process, you are sharper, sharpening your segment base on, let's say in this case, DV360, right? So you will be sharpening your consumer base there. And each of those segments, so that's what you see here, the viewer of the ad one goes into the consideration segment and we show them the second ad, which is the consideration ad. 
and from there on you take him take them down the funnel to the purchase intent of the bottom funnel content but those who did not finally react to the first piece of ad are excluded the, the those who have reacted excluded and the uh, rest are shown the second piece and so on and so forth this is to sharpen your segments that dv360 had given you just to ensure that those not so watertight com uh, components are now further sh further sharpened when you are trying to uh, target them the obvious is true that when you're trying to reach them out not only through google or youtube but you're also trying to reach out through meta and its platforms you would be constructing content basis what are the best practices for the platform so that the um, user segments are uh, connected or um, reached out rightly and through the process we ended up creating many many assets and this what we are talking about and this is uh, these are sets of content that you would be generating through the funnel right and when you are really um, when we went ahead and did this targeting it was not only just using the algorithms of facebook or a puff max at google etc but you would also we wanted to use certain ai algorithms the jury is still out how efficient they are we have been using them at scale now where it's the media deployment is through an ai channel which is across all platforms whether it's ott facebook as in meta or or google with its gdn or youtube so that we can build in the efficiency of that 100 rupee that is there in your wallet across all the platforms and these are just some scores to exemplify that moving on from there it is just not about the content piece that you are pushing to the consumers through cohorts but if there is a call to action and when the consumer is clicking on it your landing page or that means your bottom mid funnel assets your own assets are they in sync so for example if you are if you have been shown the sedentary lifestyle and you have clicked on that the when you land of the land on your own digital asset the page for that should also be in sync i should not see that content and land on a page which disconnects with me and that translates into a lot of of course bounce rates etc but our idea was also to understand this better and create something what we call as the good quality um, consumer base and that means it's a combination of the first one on there that's called the in market interest and the high interest which is basically based on time spent how much have you scrolled on your on our um, ashirwad website when we have taken them there and basis that what we construct is called the good quality traffic we ignore initially the mid uh, quality traffic and those of course who have bounced uh, from there and th these are examples of different kinds of landing pages that you have so that you generate this good quality uh, um, consumer base at scale when you are doing your uh, marketing of course you cannot ignore vernacular content when you are when you are creating these at a pan I pan india level moving on when you are using this first party data the point was then till now what you have seen is a lot of push marketing still but then what about the pull part of the marketing and hence where we are now talking about that as brands we just not we should not just think about as advertisers but as publishers and hence content creators and that led to the rise of the platform called happy tummy now happy tummy is a platform which is only about digestion and hence we started with a very sharp central idea called digestive quotient so you come to the platform you take a test around digestive quotient and then starts the journey uh, with consumers so lots of routes to bring traffic to the platform uh, right from pr to ad campaigns and so on and so forth and then there are multitude of ways to engage with the consumers when they land on the platform so there are recipes to engage with the consumers there are nutritionists there to engage with the consumer to make the uh, engagement uh, stronger deeper and there are few a lot of nutritionist consultations that uh, that was provided and so on and so forth uh, these are examples of that and of course um, uh, somebody was presenting just before me and there was an influencer part of the um, conversation that happened of course we used your influencers to demonstrate we use influencers primarily to demonstrate the usps of the brand and that those were also used at scale uh, and this is how it all started as a journey um, and, and the interesting part is that uh, the first fear factor that comes to brands is that what is the cost of acquisition really can you really manage a content based approach or a pull based approach 
Uh, and, and what we ended up seeing is we could drive traffic to the platform at just rupees 30. The journey started with somewhere around 750, 800 rupees on cost of acquisition. And now we are in a position of ge generating traffic at just 30, 30, 35 rupees. And it is now moved down to 30. Uh, these are some examples of that. And search, of course, and SEO based, all the work done based on SEO, whether it's the backlinking piece and so on and so forth, helped. The other interesting piece that you will see is that the, the testimony of consumer engagement is the bounce rates would keep coming down. We also saw that a lot of people are coming to the platform because they wanted a meal solution, a meal plan solution around high fiber. And that was the second set of uh, levers that we unleashed in order to generate a lot of consumer pull uh, and repeat, repeated views and, and stickiness and so on and so forth. So you see all these charts which are talking about hence your how has the matrix improved whether it's with respect to DQ or with respect to the meal plans. <clears throat> Moving on, now as you have generated a lot of first party data on your platform, you now knew a lot more about your consumers. So you know low DQ score people, you know mid DQ score people, you knew high DQ score people. You also knew people who are actually consuming less of fruits, people who are con getting stressed and they're not sleeping well in the night. So there are a lot more information that you were generating because they were landing on your own platform. And thus led to a lot of content that you push and you see that I don't think whether you guys can read them properly. But let's say the first one is about set of consumers whom we saw as a segment who consumes a lot of less, uh, who do not consume a lot of fruit and you would design a content piece for them. These are all from that perspective that you're going to generate uh, resonance with the consumers and in the process build your brand. And, and again, one of the key data points or matrix that you're going to measure for is the declining zero resonance traffic. The, as it keeps going down, you know that your content strategy is working sharply in order to generate the desired equity and of course you're measuring equity on the side. Um, very quickly, the, there is a set of new muscles. We know about the, uh, the value that consumers now give about authenticity. There's a lot of conversation about organic today, but organic mostly from the perspective it doesn't have chemicals. But we wanted, because of that strong back, back end or backbone that we called out, we have the ability to trace back to the farm from where we have, where we have t bought the organic uh, wheat from. And hence, we build a traceability tool which you can scan, you will get the certificate, you will see the farm from where we have picked up the wheat and so on and so forth. Year of millets, and hence you cannot but not talk about millets. Uh, our presence in um, millets have also happened this year. Uh, we've also ensured to create a product which would be really easy three step. I'll take just a 10 seconds to take you through this. When it comes to food, my husband and kids only care about taste. So it's up to me to ensure that they get the right nutrition. Millets are nutritious, but my kids don't like it. Then I found Ashirvath Multi Millet Mix. It can be added to your regular batter. I just add this 80 grams pouch to 240 grams of batter and make the dosa the regular way without any change in taste. My husband and kids don't even notice the difference and I am able to add nutritious millets to their diets. Right, so um, while there is a flour and homemakers really don't know, younger homemakers really don't know what to do with that. So we thought it's a better way to introduce millets so that uh, life becomes more convenient when you are trying to use millets and make, life, make nutritional food out of that. Namaste. The other angle that we took was uh, to build purpose. 20 years of brand, we've always been a great friend in the kitchen. We thought it is time now to become a great friend in the life. Um, so what we did was last year, because it was the 20th year also, uh, we moved into creating a program called Raho Char Kadam Aage. Now we had a four step process before that and which is the left uh, content piece and I'm not going to show you it anymore. But we used to say that we buy wheat from here, we, we clean it like this and we grind it in a particular fashion which is a traditional way and so on and so forth. But we said that let's take the same storytelling back into when we say we are a friend in your life. So what would that mean is that you go, you, you, there was a phone number given, people had to register. We partnered with the organization called Hunar. We said that we are going to upskill you in different fields. And you know, 75,000 women actually uh, registered and have completed their course. 
We also tied up with Flipkart because we say it's just not upskilling. If you really want to make a commercial sense of that upskilling, then can you go there and sell your products as much as you want to or can? And that was the partnership. I know you are here and Reliance, but um, uh, that's that's um, that's how the partnership went, and we found a lot of resonance. Uh, that was the first year that we have done, and we think that we will have different avatars of this as we progress. Um, मैं एक रहनी रही हूँ स्क्रीन पर भी और असल जिंदगी में भी और दोनों में ही मैंने मुश्किल रास्तों पर चलकर अपनी एक नई पहचान बनाई है तो आज मैं आपसे कहती हूँ कि आप भी अपने लिए एक रास्ता चुनिए ना जो पूरा कर सके आपका सपना और उस रास्ते पर आपका साथ देंगे हम आशीर्वाद आटा और इंडिया टुडे ग्रुप के अभियान रहो चार कदम आगे के जरिए so we talked about the newer muscles we talked about authenticity and traceability we talked about of course millets and health we talked about giving a new purpose to ashirwad and a new meaning to the life in the life of the consumer and then of course customization of atta customization is as we all understand is another important vector uh, which consumers value a lot and this is now available on itcstore.in right now and now we've also launched a new platform called ashirwad meri chakki where you can choose your wheat you can choose your desired mix you can choose the way you want to grind it and your grammage uh, that you want and those combinations uh, and it will be it is actually made uh, once you order and it's actually delivered to your house next day uh, with the time stamp your name on it and everything so that's the customization route so these are new muscles that you are flexing and hence these are all critical so there's a digital aspect this is completely data driven we we discussed that piece but these are newer muscles which the brand needs to need to keep building so going forward just a few uh, now finally uh, one gyans or two gyans slides on it uh, if you see the entire journey there's a lot that you need to build at the core which builds conversations i think that's the core and how can you build that conversations because it's no more a one way it's no more that chun chun ki ad that we had created in 2002 it is all about now to build newer muscles into the brand which can fuel talkability um then hence becomes these are the few strategic pillars that we believe are key for us whether it's content based on value exchange whether it's building connected experiences whether it's excellence in full marketing and uh, full funnel marketing etc but these are also now being enabled by a lot of ai tools that are around with us and i've used the word connected multiple places and we feel that this is the kind of touch point ecosystem that one can probably look at we are looking at this very closely and strongly where it's just not about a siloed approach but uh, a connected approach whether it's in the space of data whether it's in st space of storytelling whether it's push based marketing or content and hence pull based marketing and that's not possible without a huge set of partners in the ecosystem and because as an organization you're not going to build all these skill sets or your muscles to build that uh, and while we do this we are extremely paranoid about the fact that there is a lot of stuff that is happening there which you need to protect your brands from whether it's the ad fraud whether it's the brand safety a lot of reputational angle which are at stake and of course we don't know when the new bill is going to come through but this is an area which we are extremely paranoid about and becomes extremely important for all of us to look at very carefully thank you